care about you and your business. Welcome to the Social Trader Show with Onoja on Africa Business Radio. Today's market transcends beyond ups and shops. Global Trends sets the pace for today's trader. On Africa Business Radio, we bring you Social Trader, keeping you updated around the world of online business across social media platforms on africabusinessradio.com. Why am I even tempted to start this show ringing the danger alarm though? Oh, well, I can relate somehow because I'm talking safety today. Let me start by asking you this question. Do you know that cyber criminals do not discriminate? Well, every business, regardless of size or reputation, is a potential victim. Yeah, you heard me right. In fact, do you also know that small businesses, especially startups, are seen as more appealing to them because they are more vulnerable and usually do not have the security mechanism of bigger companies? Well, on this episode of The Social Trader Show, I will be tackling the most sensitive and important part of owning a business. My name is Onoja, and this is The Social Trader Show, exclusive to the Africa Business Radio. Now, regardless of how small or inconspicuous you may think your business is, having cybersecurity measures in place to protect your business's data is a non-negotiable responsibility of every business owner and startup entrepreneur. And that is why on this episode, I'll be sharing some important safety tips for small businesses. You would agree with me that out of the so many challenges of owning a startup, security is one most important yet overlooked by so many entrepreneurs. Hence, some experience massive downfall in business due to that negligence. You don't want to be part of that, no way. Now, one of the tips you need to safeguard your business is to conduct sufficient screening and background check. Yes, you heard me. Conducts sufficient screening and background checks. This is me literally counting my words so you get me clearly. Now, why hackers catch most dissension of the cyber breaches, and rightly so, a good number of breaches stem from internal sources. It may also interest you to know that about 14% of global data breaches in 2015 came from within the business's network firewall. Now, what you need to do? Extensively screen all prospective employees. This goes beyond conventional calling references. Evaluate their knowledge of cybersecurity measures as well as their browsing patterns. It also helps to allow an initial trial period during which their access to sensitive data is blocked or limited while you monitor them for a suspicious network activity. Another way to safeguard your business is to leverage a disaster recovery service. What do I mean? Now, any catastrophe, natural or intentional, such as hacking, can destroy your business's database. In worst case scenario, causing a total or near total shutdown of the enterprise. This can also cost your business financially. Just so you know, it can cost you to lose everything that you've really worked hard, hard to get. That is what it means. Now, disaster recovery services are built to ensure that your business's data is always available to you, especially in the event of an attack. It is designed to protect and restore data, servers or entire data centers. In case of outage, your system can also be recovered and restarted locally or in a cloud, enabling you to continue running your business's applications until you can safely get back up and running. In today's competitive business world, guys, the rising cost of downtime and the competition to always be online has made disaster recovery service a viable IT business solution. Yeah. And lastly, before I go... Learn to eliminate password vulnerability. That's one thing you also need to really, really focus on. You know, we have this system and this template of fixing our passwords. It's either our date of birth or we're saying we're either using our surname or our nicknames or whatever. This is to let you know that it is highly vulnerable for you to use such ideas. Now, many people still use very predictable and clumsy passwords for sensitive records, such as their online banking accounts, logging information, you know. See this list of some of the worst possible passwords people use to get a better sense of how vulnerable many of our accounts are. You know, the general rule to follow is to use a mixture of numbers, letters and symbols of no less than eight characters. This is good, but you can take it a step further. Now, a study conducted by the Linkopi University in Sweden reported that 68% of online users reuse passwords while 28% of users never change their passwords. Microsoft advises to never use personal information, such as, you know, your date of birth, like I earlier mentioned, or a rearrangement of commonly spelled words 
or a word constituting. Consider using words or phrases that you like and make them at least 12 characters as long. Have a unique password for each of your accounts. I can't stress that enough. Create a master document that has all your account information on it and password this also. So you can also have a handwritten copy of the master document stashed away in a safe space. That way, if you forget, you can always run back to check what your passwords really, really are. And that way you are, you know, somehow assured that you cannot get hacked at any time. Yeah. And like you already know, guys, moving on is our guest segment where we get to meet another social trader who is going to be our social trader for the day. Do not go anywhere. We are the wind in the sails of your business. We are your compass. Chart your course towards your targets. Africa Business Radio. Towards a profitable Africa. Voila, good to know that you're still out there listening to the Africa Business Radio Social Trader Show. And I'm very happy. You know, like, you know, when you're saying, like, I have another goon in the house, like, I'm excited about saying that I have a warrior in the house. I like to call entrepreneurs warriors because they get to stand in front of the, the, it's just like the war front. You know, they get to stand regardless of the hurdles that come with this hustle. These guys are waxing strong on a daily. So you time I have a guest in the house, this is this overexcitement like I always see on the show. Because I get to get into conversation, deep conversation with these guys to know what it is, uh, you know, it feels like to be an entrepreneur. And today, I'm excited, very, very excited to be in conversation with Ugochi Joseph, a graduate of Imo State University, Oweri. She is the management and operations consultant by profession and also the chief executive officer of the Liquid Sport, a healthy food brand now, which she runs alongside her 9 to 5 job. Interesting, right? Hmm. It was founded in 2018 and later, you know, it was incorporated in 2019 as an enterprise business with the Corporate Affairs Commission. That is a lot, a lot if you ask me. Now the Liquid Sport brand offers a parfait, a fresh juice and drinks, a salad and wraps, a natural sweetness, honey and date syrup that is, and granola. Good. Hi, 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 Ogechi. How does it feel to be on Africa Business Radio? Feels good. Feels interesting so right. looking forward to it. so interesting thing i think we should get the listeners into the story of how we met right i'm this passionate just as the african business radio is about entrepreneurs so i was on a bus with ugochi and i was sitting next to her just directly uh next to her just directly i was just like together on one seat and i don't know i did something that is not supposed to be done uh, well, I was minding my business, but my eye just flashed through her screen where she was typing. And what she was typing literally said, Hey fam, I have a new product out. You guys should check out. You know how these guys hustle. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, I need to connect through to her and know what she's about. And today I'm very excited because we got talking and I got to know that she's an entrepreneur working really hard to push her own personal brand. Hi, Ogochi. Hi, Yonodja. Give us an in-depth insight. What is the journey of entrepreneurship for you like? Wow. Okay. Um, so first, I'll just say this. Um, I never thought I would be in the business space because mm-hmm. I never saw myself as one. While I was back in school, um, I just thought that um, life would be, you know, nine to five. So you're just very young and not knowing what the future holds for you, right? So mm-hmm. I just thought that, well, nine to five, I think I'm an office person and not any entrepreneurial. Never thought, never saw myself there. Yeah, but so back to just some few years back, um, I just had this, I've just had this insatiable hunger, right, mm. inside of me and then something burning and something just, I just know that, no, this is, nine to five is not, not just for me, right? Yeah, I have to do that because I need to do what I have to do. Mm-hmm. But then at the end of the day, it's not what I will settle for, right? So ideas keep coming in and then, in fact, it was, it was just something that I needed to do because, you know, there's, there's this hunger that just, inside of you that you need to quench mm-hmm. so until you quench that hunger you would you never will be not, relaxed yes so i just had to i just had to do i i kept procrastinating i must say that i kept pushing i kept saying no, no i just brushed it aside but because it was always reoccurring i had to do something about it awesome we're glad that you found your hunger and you're fulfilling it right now so tell us a bit about um you know liquid um sports yeah, yeah? i know you're into you know honey 
day, fresh juice and like a lot of other stuff that you do. Tell us, how did you realize this was what you wanted to do? What's the inspiration from? Okay, so first I fell ill um, a while back, some years back, very ill, very ill. And um, doctors advised that I should be 50% or even 60% on fruits and vegetables. So that um, made me... So I was doing that, right? I was really just taking that, you know, using drugs as well as um, strictly maintaining that diet of fruits and veggies. And I found that I just noticed a huge difference in in my body metabolism, if I may use that mm. word, right? I noticed that, wow, this is awesome. Ever you know? since you go natural. Yes. Mm. And then I felt, yeah, people need to know about this. People need to not just your um, everyday junks. Yeah, you can do that once in a while, but mm -hmm. then you also need to focus on your diet, focus on on the things that you consume because exactly. really you are what you eat exactly. right so that's where the inspiration came from and then also my parents have this issue this health um history right and i would never wanted to be a part of that i wanted the story to change mm -hmm. so i just said to myself i was going to make a difference i was going to make a huge difference in my health i was going to take good steps that would um you know that would turn my health status in the right direction and then that's part of what inspired the liquid spot exactly interesting to know that oh you actually you were recommended to do certain things for your you know health yeah and you tried it and discovered yeah this is actually a good way to live a life yeah and you just didn't get selfish about it to keep mm -hmm. it to yourself you decided mm -hmm. to extend it to everybody yeah. but now this time around you decided to monetize it yes please. tell us about your acceptance so far how far have people been coming Monetary wise, would you say, yo, this is like a right decision, a step in a good direction? Well, truthfully, if I look at it, so pushing an, a business as well as having a full time job is very difficult. It is. Very strenuous. So I would say that, yes, I may not have been consistent as much as I should be, really, because a business is something that you should focus on, right? But I've not had that time, but I'm doing my best, you know, one step at a time, right? Mm -hmm. That little effort you put in every day matters a lot. Exactly. So, you know, I put in my best to ensure that, you know, I'm doing this, you know, I'm not, I'm not breaking the cycle. I'm just, you know, going for it. And yes, I've been able to monetize, maybe not break even right but i'm just pushing you know knowing that one day you know that that point where i want to be i will definitely get, get there, there. definitely yes, with so that. much hard work and passion that i saw it on that bus yeah, yeah you're definitely getting yeah. somewhere now you said something to me while we were talking and you mentioned that, oh you actually have a nine to five job and also run your own business alongside. Mm -hmm. And that sort of struck me because this is the first time I'm meeting an entrepreneur who's saying that, oh, I work for another boss and I'm also a boss to myself. Yeah. How did you juggle this two together? <laughs> like I said, it's... I mean, I assume in my head, there should be time where you're probably trying to execute a task for yourself and then your boss is calling you, oh, go, chi, you need to do this. Have you done that? You, How do you juggle these things together? Okay, so um, initially when I started, it was difficult to, you know, create a balance between my 9 to 5 job mm -hmm. and my business. But um, so I think I read something that, so your daytime belongs to your boss, mm -hmm. yeah, because you do a 9 to 5. But then at night, what are you doing? What, what are you time? What are you making? What are you doing at your night time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you get to sleep, right? But then you don't get to sleep throughout the night. So your night time is when you need to... Um, you know, work on those dreams, those vision that mm. you know that you've set for yourself, and that's what Some has of worked us for love me. Sleep or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, I do love sleep, honestly. But then I've, I've just made a decision that mm. so my night time would be when I would, you know, want to, you know, do other stuff that reg that concerns my business, right? That's how I've been able to create the balance between my work and my business. So I try to, as much as possible to, you know, put my work while I'm in the office. I focus on my job. But then while I'm out of the office, I then focus on my business and then I push the brand as much as I can. Mm, fair enough. I think yeah. this is fair enough. Yeah, but you just have to have some level of sacrifice yeah, of to be able to do that. Because when you're supposed to be sleeping, you're there strategizing and, you know, putting things together. Now let's talk about branding. 
it should be a couple of pictures that concerns your company, your brand now. And I was really impressed at how far you've gone, trying to make it look that package and everything. Yeah. What is that inspiration? What is that thing that pushed you to get your packaging to this point that it is at the moment? And is there any like innovation that you intend to do later? Okay, so I would say that working in a nine to five wasn't a bad idea after all. So I started out um, in a management consultant firm, which helped me a lot to see the very important little details that are needed to push a brand, right? And so learning from the consultant perspective taught me um, things about business, taught me how to launch your own business, taught me how to package your business because mm-hmm. at the end of the day it's all about packaging. Yeah. People want people buy with their eyes first before, before. they use your product. Very right. True. So you definitely need to have something good out there speaking for you. Yeah. So that's where the idea of the packaging, you know, making your product look good, came you from. know, came from. I just had to stand out. Yes, that's the word. I had to your product has to stand out for people to want to patronize even you. yeah patronize you. Yeah. So that's where um the idea came from. And then if if I'll be doing any innovation later in the future of course so change is constant you must always um learn to upgrade and keep up with time yes yes exactly so So i agree agree with that totally 100 percent. now you know we're in the era of social media Mm -hmm. and for every entrepreneur that has come on the show they've always given credit to the social media and then i saw you like making use you know leveraging on that social media trying to market your brand Mm -hmm. how would you say the social media has helped you Well, it has helped me, you know, create visibility for my brand because really if social media wasn't in existence, really I would have been thinking of maybe a physical store. But then with social media, I can see that sometimes you don't even need a physical store or maybe at the initial start, you Mm -hmm. probably don't need a physical store. You could push because we have uh, millions and one people on the social media, right? So push your brand online create that visibility for yourself online sell your brand it's just about consistency i wouldn't say that i'm perfect yet because i'm still working progress mm. but then i'm pushing your every video day you're pushing i could tell i really i would agree 100 yeah. percent because i know what i saw you know this was you heading to work mm. like you know commuting to the office in traffic. and at the same time it, uh, exactly in traffic <laughs> and you decide that yo i have to take advantage of this traffic yeah. to also post my personal things yeah. which is really commendable i hope there's someone listening right now mm-hmm. especially if you are an entrepreneur and you're listening to us right now you need to do some extra stuff to get to that point you want to get to trust me yeah. if you keep lounging i'm sorry you might have to back up anytime soon and we don't want you to give up that dream beautiful dream keep working hard and I tell you, you're going to look for me to thank me for encouraging you and asking you to go harder. Okay. Yeah. Ugochi, well, quickly tell us what is that worst experience, the very worst experience you've had with a client? All right. So have I had one? Yes, I did. I, I did have one recently. So I sold um, a product, honey, mm-hmm. to a client. And she came back and said, and sent me a review on WhatsApp and said, I got this honey. And then it seems the color is not so good it looks different from what i got the last time Mm -hmm. because she really liked it so she tried my product the first time and she was like wow she was wowed by my product and she was like you know what you're now my honey plug i'll always get honey from you but then she came back with a review i'm just last week or early this week and then she said so the color is different and it's a bit watery and i said okay you know what send me a video and can i even see what that is so for me customer experience is um is key for my business right Mm -hmm. i know that because i feel like customers are the bloodstream of your business without those customers you don't have a business you don't have a brand definitely right so i prioritize my customers and so she sent me a video and then said okay yeah i saw what she was showing to me and um i felt a bit i was i was shocked because i've never had such reports Mm -hmm. because i know that i try as much as possible to ensure that all my products are natural go through Mm -hmm. a hygienic process and so she got back to me and i was very happy that she gave me that feedback and then i told her you know what i would replace that for you Mm -hmm. but then let me have the product i need to investigate what went wrong so that you know it doesn't happen again Mm -hmm. right so yeah that's 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 that experience for me i think that's basically like one very bad experience that i've had and you got to like replace it for her yes of course great and were you able to go investigate what she actually was complaining about yes so i'm still working on that because just it was just a recent purchase that's a very honest honest way to go about stuff great yeah, awesome. So what's the future for the liquid sports? Huh. 
So the liquid spots, I envision a lot of things with okay. the liquid spots. Yes. Yeah, so um, I see the brand becoming one of the biggest healthy brands in Nigeria. Mm. Yeah. So I, I, I know there are other brands in the space and I, I see my brand even being as big as they are or even bigger. Good right. Time. Big pictures. Um, because um, I know that um, the product offerings have a lot of potentials. Food is one basic thing that you cannot take away from anybody. Exactly. People must eat. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So I see the brand, um, you know, you know, even developing into having a physical store, having even multiple stores as well. Because definitely I won't just be online. I'll have to advance definitely. and go beyond being just being an online brand to, to, to have a physical, a physical space. store mm-hmm. and even multiple of them. Awesome. Yeah. So that's where I see the brand go to. Great. Yeah. So there's someone listening. You know, we've been talking about the really, really interesting stuff, healthy stuff. You know, we talked about, like I mentioned, buffet, fresh juices and drinks, salads, ra- and wraps, natural sweeteners, honey, I dates. Include and Zobo. Yeah, that's oh, part she of the said Zobo as well. It's part of the fresh juice, right? Yeah. So there's someone listening right now, and they, they are probably around Lagos because mm-hmm. I'm sure you're somehow limited for now. Yes. As yes. a starter. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like you're limited for now. So there's someone probably in Lagos because we caught across Africa. So. Sorry if you can't afford to, you know, order now. But I promise you, sooner she's getting bigger, so you yeah, can actually order from anywhere. Course. But if you're in Lagos and you're wondering how to get through to Ugo, she's actually here <laughs> to give us her handles on how we can actually get through to her in case we need anything to order. So Ugo, you're going to quickly tell us where we can find you on the internet. Okay, so I have a page on Instagram, the Liquid Spot at the Liquid Spot D E D H E R D and L I. Q U I D S O P T. You like that's S P O T. S P O T. Ah, you yeah. pay me for this correction. S P O T. Thank S-P-O-T. you, Anoja. It's spot. It's actually spot. Yes, spot. 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 Like location. Spot. So it's a liquid. The liquid spot. So I yes. think the D is not the T H. It's actually the D. Yes. The D. The letter D. Yes. Then liquid spot. But, but on Instagram is mm-hmm. actually T H E. Okay. The liquid spot. Okay. Now that you've heard it. Go on Instagram, check her out at uh, the Liquid Spot, yeah. and place your orders for whatever it is that you see. If they are not fine, don't please. So, but trust me, trust I don't me. hype what is not fine. <laughs> so, course. for her to be here, I tell you guys, it's of high quality, and you can come back to thank me later. Thank you so much, Ugochi, thank for sharing you, this Nadia. moment thank with you for us. Having me. All right, so I've been speaking with Ugochi, and it's so interesting to know that she's working really hard. Uh, she's a graduate of Imo State University. Oweri, she's a management and operations consultant by profession and also the chief executive officer of the Liquid Sport, a healthy food brand, which she runs alongside her nine to five job. Interesting, right? You know, a lot of you guys will be like, I can't even combine my, my job with another thing. So I'm just yeah. going to pick one and leave one. But she's a muscle up. She's so strong that she can actually do so together. So the brand was founded in 2018 and was later in 2019 incorporated as an enterprise business with, the, uh, you know, the Corporate Affairs Commission. We go to one and wish you the very best. And thank, thank you, you so much for dropping by. Thank you so much, Anaja. All right, guys. So it's been the Social Traders Show here on Africa Business Radio. And moving forward, we are going to be checking out our top three tips on how to succeed as an entrepreneur. If you want to know how to succeed as an entrepreneur... I am your plug. You know that already. So you want to stay here. Until then, stay tuned. (laughs) Wow. And that was the beautiful Ugochi Joseph there doing her thing. I mean, it's amazing how we met, right? And today we're talking business together. You know, isn't that magical? Anyways, uh, moving on is our top three tips on how to succeed as an entrepreneur. Do not go anywhere. We are the wind in the sails of your business. We are your compass. Chart your course towards your targets. Africa Business Radio. Towards a profitable Africa. All right, guys, on our top three tips on how to succeed as an entrepreneur segment today. Before I get into what I have to say today, let me just do a little recap on what we treated last week. You remember last week I gave a tip. I said, if you want to be successful in business, first you have to have a solid business plan. And I went on to say that you have to prepare for financial challenges, you know, uh, always have something to run back to in case, you know, stuff happened because stuff would always happen. And then I went on to this particular one that said you have to be frugal, like you need to go really hard. Remember also that you're a startup. And then what do I have for today? Well, this one is very important. The first tip that you need if you want to be successful as an entrepreneur today on this segment is to not be afraid to ask for help. Okay? 
Do not be afraid to ask for help. Nobody's above that, no matter how capable you think you are. There are lots of resources out there for networking. Knowledge sharing and advice, guys, is very, very important. So there are lots of opportunities for you to get knowledge and to also gain advice. So yeah, networking is not just for new business opportunities. It can be a wonderful source of support and fresh ideas also. Attend events, do not forget. Attend events, guys, such as free master classes and, you know, just business expo events and all of this other stuff. Yeah, don't hesitate to ask for advice from those around you, such as your intermediary, bank, manager, landlord, or even your neighbors, right, in business. Always ask for help when you feel there's a need to. Or online forums also can help you. Facebook community, for example, too, are all available to help you. So do not hold back if you want to be successful as an entrepreneur. So do not be afraid to ask for help. Nobody is above that. And my second tip for today is to put your faith in a trusted mentor. We all need mentors in our career path. There's no how you can be on a mentor to yourself, for example, and still like you want to own the business yourself and be a mentor to yourself. It wouldn't work that way. You have to look up to someone who's going to inspire and help you go through that path. It can be a family member, you know, guys, former boss or colleague, or even a trusted online source or blog. A mentor, remember, is an invaluable sounding board. Someone who's been where you are. Someone with whom you can have a regular, non-judgmental check-ins. And my last tip for today that actually rounds up my top three tips on how to succeed as an entrepreneur is marketing on a shoestring budget. Now, guys, marketing your new business is extremely important, but doesn't have to cost the earth. Okay? It's almost like saying cut your code according to your sizes. Social media is your friend. Creating your business page on Facebook is free and will help your online search ranking. So, is submitting your website URLs to search engines like Google and Bing. It's completely free. Just go ahead and do that. No one is going to charge you for that. You don't need to pay anybody to do certain things for you. So please, marketing on a shoestring budget is very important to your business. Also, keep an eye out of the community Facebook groups. Some require, you know, a small advertising fee while others allow you to advertise your business on a certain days of the week. The bottom line with marketing is to try anything and everything. You won't know what will work for you until you try it. Why don't you go ahead and give it a shot? Okay, on that note, I have wrapped up my top three tips on how to succeed as an entrepreneur. And sadly, this is where I drop the curtain on this week's episode of the Social Trader Show. I know you've learned something, the entrepreneur. Reach out to us. Let me know how you feel about the show by simply checking us out on our Instagram or Facebook or maybe Twitter to let us know how you feel about the show. Remember, you can catch us up on Facebook and Twitter at Africa Beast Radio and, of course, Instagram at Africa Business Radio. Until next week, my name is Onoja and do have a great one. Bye. Today's market transcends beyond ups and shops. Global trends sets the pace for today's trader. On Africa Business Radio, we bring you Social Trader, keeping you updated around the world of online business across social media platforms on africabusinessradio.com.